Hello again. This tutorial is going to be how to use the Beaver Builder drag and drop app to make this blank background one with a little bit of style and flair. So, up to this point, I've showed you how to edit a page in a post using WordPress's default editing program. I guess would be the best way to say that. So we're going to go into the back so we can see what I just said. So if you look at the text editor, this is the default WordPress text editor. What we're going to do is use Beaver Builder to spice things up. So if you see next to the tab text editor here, we have Beaver Builder. When I click on that, it will launch Beaver Builder from the back end. And I now have all this new opportunity to design. So as a quick overview, in the top right hand corner where this plus sign is, I have all these different modules that add style and flair to my page. In this instance, we're going to just be changing the background. So I'm not really going to be using any of these at the very moment. We have in front of us a row, which is this blue bar right here. And the row is holding three columns. One, two, the middle one being occupied by our form, and three. So one and three are empty. Two has all this information in it, which is a header box, a separator line, a text box, and then of course the actual form. Now to change the background, we want to go into the row, because the row is what holds all of the columns on the page. So I'm going to click on this wrench that says row settings and this little info box pops up and here it gives me all the different options to customize the row that the columns are sitting in. We can do a number of things for the background we could do a color, we could do a gradient, we could do a photo, we could do a video, a slideshow, or a parallax. Parallax would not necessarily make sense in this particular example, but we can go over that another time. So to do a color, oh then of course none. The color is already set to, back, set to white, so it's basically like having none. So if you want to change the background color, you would set the type to color, go to the next line that's background color, click on the little eyedropper, and you can change the color. And you can see it happen in real time. Obviously you probably want to do something that stays with the brand, but for an example this is what you can do. If you wanted to add a gradient, again click gradient, and now you have your options for your first gradient color, which maybe we can try to make this look somewhat pretty for the sake of this. So we could have our gradient color being this sort of light brown going into nothing, showing the background being white or we could make this another color so you can have the brown going into a green um, you can change the angle if you can see that subtly in the background the angle is changing I actually really like those colors it's really pretty together 
I'll maybe save that for another time. Um, so that's an option. I'm literally saving those right now because I like it so much. Anyways. You can choose whether it's linear or radial. So there's the radial, which looks also really cool. You can choose to add a photo, in which case you would select a photo. You could upload a new fo photo into your media library, or if you already have a photo in your media library, you can choose a photo. When you add the photo, you have these options below to repeat, if that makes sense for your design. Doesn't make sense for this design because this is just a large photo. You can have it be in the bottom center. You can have it be top right. It just sort of changes the location of the photo in the background. You can have it scroll or be fixed. So that means when you scroll, it stays still if it's fixed. And if you set it to scroll and you scroll, then it goes with you. And you can choose for it to fill the background, fit the background, or just kind of be within the, the row perimeters. In a situation like this, I'd probably click fill. You could add a video, which I don't think we have that option at the very moment. Actually, maybe we do. Yeah, we can go into the media library. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know how much sense that makes for this. But you could use the media library, you could use a URL from another website, or you could use a link from YouTube or Vimo. You could do a slideshow, in which case you would select a series of photos. Uh, let's see choose this one, I'll choose that one. I'll choose that one. I'll add these photos to my gallery. Update the gallery. And now you have a slideshow happening in the background. Which is kind of cool. You can change the speed. You can change the transition from fade to Ken Burns, which you would probably not use in this instance. You can have it slide horizontally or vertically. You can have it do that weird blinds effect where it looks like you're opening and closing the blinds. Yep, there you go. Let's see it happen again. Oh, there you go. Uh, bars, random boxes, a bunch of different options. Personally, I think the fade looks the best. There are other things that you can do to edit the row. If you just go, if you just scroll down this information box, you'll see all the different options. In this case, as a background color, you're not going to see it anymore because we now put a photo over it or a slideshow over it. Again, this doesn't make any sense because we don't, we can't see the background. 
We could put a border on it with a shadow if you wanted. There's a lot of different things that you can do to it. But that is, in a nutshell, how you would add a background to a page. So I hope you found that helpful, and I'll talk to you in the next video.